Hi everyone, I'm glad to talk in this geometric and analysis festival. First, I will thank Hu Jiuli for his organization and invitation. In this talk, I will begin with some introduction of Alexandro Fanchio inequalities in Euclidean space and the more general abint space. And then I will talk about our recent work concerning the Alexandro Fanchio inequalities in the sphere. The classical Alexandro Fanchio inequalities correspond to the relation of two curvature measures. So let me introduce curvature measure through the Stan formula in differential geometric setting. Suppose omega is a domain of Rn plus 1. This area contains all points for which the distance satisfy that for any given Boreal set beta P omega x are included in beta where P omega x denotes the set of the nearest points in omega to x Then this area contains all points of the set of A delta omega beta. By the standard formula, we could obtain that the volume of A delta omega beta can be written as a polynomial expansion. The coefficients are defined as the curvature measures of the convex body omega. The global quantities are called the core mass integral, where sigma k is the kth elementary symmetric function. Cnk equals to sigma k over sigma k minus 1. It is clear that the curvature measures capture the geometry of partial omega. What are the relations between two core mass integrals? How much information can we ex extract from the curvature measures? The first question corresponds to the Alexandro Fanchio inequalities. The second question corresponds to the problem of prescribing curvature measures. The classical Alexandro Fanchio inequalities in Euclidean space can be expressed as follows. Where B is the standard ball in Euclidean, in Euclidean space, Vm plus 1 minus Mb and Vm minus Mb are dimension constant. So this inequality implies the relation between the integral of sigma m and the integral of sigma m plus minus 1. The case of m equal to 0 is the classical isoparametric inequality. McQueen gave a new proof using core mass integral preserving curvature flow. Guan and Li proved that this inequality holds for k convex and star shaped domain using the inverse curvature flow, k hat flow. Here, star shapeless means that the support function is positive. K convexity means that if the principal curvature 
are included in the closure of gamma k, where gamma k is the garden's cone. Do Alexandra Fancher inequalities hold for domains in more general abint space? Next, let me introduce the Alexandra Fancher inequalities in hyperbolic space. There is a corresponding definition of core mass integral in the space form. Compare with the core mass integral defined in the Euclidean space, the core mass integral in the space form contains an extra term. This term will disappear in the Euclidean space. A nice feature of this definition is that the variation of AL with respect to T has a simple term. Now we will introduce the Alexandra type inequalities for edge convex domains in hyperbolic space. Wang and Xia establish the full range of the relation between WK and WL for general K and L with the assumption of edge convexity. Here, edge convex means that all principal curvatures are greater than or equal to 1. They use the globally constrained curvature flow to prove these type inequalities. Here, phi t is globally defined, and phi t is chosen to keep WL being a constant. Here, WK plus 1 is equal to a constant times AK, where AK are defined as before. Who the way reproved this result with assumption of edge convex? And they applied the locally constrained curvature flow introduced by Simbrangel. Peng Fei Guan and Jun Fang Li, where u is the support function and f is equal to sigma k over sigma k minus 1. The edge convex condition is convenient for analysis, but it is strong geometrically. We would like to weaken this assumption. Andrews, Chen, and Wei establish the relation between WK and W0 with the assumption of positive sectional coverage. By the Gauss curve, Equation A hypersurface M has positive sectional coverage if kappa i times kappa j are greater than 1. Brando, Guan, and Li wanted to weaken this assumption to K convex, t, uh, K convex and star shaped hypersurfaces. They consider the following type of flow. If they could establish the smooth convergence of this flow to geodesic sphere, they could 
establish the full range of the relation between AK and AL for general K and L. However, the long-time existence and convergence of this flow is still an open question. The main difficulty is the C1 estimate. With an extra initial gradient bound condition like this, they could establish the full range relation, uh, full range of the relation between AK and AL. Next, we will focus on the introduction of Alexandro Fancho inequalities in the sphere. We and Xiong proved the relation between the integral of the gauss bolet coverage and the area of M. The gauss bolet coverage is a linear combination of sigma 2k. They proved this inequality with the assumption of strictly convexity. Markowski and Schur established the relation between W2k plus 1 and W1. Since we have already mentioned that Wk plus 1 is equal to a constant times Ak, Theorem 3.3 implies the relation between A2K and A0 in the sphere. Ge, Wang, and Wu proved a similar type of inequalities for edge convex hypersurfaces in hyperbolic space before. Brando, Guan, and Li Consider the consider this type flow, and they want to obtain the optimal inequalities between two core mass integrals a k and a l with the assumption of k convexity and star shape lists. However, the long term existence and convergence of this flow is still an open question. The main difficulty is the estimate of the lower bound of F. If we couldn't get the estimate of the lower bound of F, this type of flow may blow up. Chen, Guan, Li, Shu consider the second type of flow. They want to establish the optimal inequalities between two core mass integrals, AK and AL, for general K and L, with the assumption of convexity. The long term existence and convergence of this type of flow is also an open question. The main difficulty is the C2 estimate. And they proposed the following conjecture. The relation between AK and AL for general K and L. The optimal inequalities between two core mass integral AK and AL for general K L is still an open question. Now I will introduce our recent work about the Alexandro Fancho inequalities in spheres. We will derive the relation between two adjacent core mass integrals for general number and the relation between two adjacent core mass integrals for general odd number. In summary, with the assumption of convexity, we could establish 
established the relation between AK and AK minus 2. Here, CK K minus 2 is a unique positive function such that the equality holds when M is a geodetic sphere. Here we will give a explicit explanation of the definition of sigma k k minus 2. When we consider the geodetic ball of radius rho centered at the origin O, the variation of a k b rho with respect to rho is positive. So we can view a k b rho as a function of rho by the inverse function theorem. Then rho can be denoted as eta k a k b rho. Here, eta k is a strictly increasing function. Thus, we can choose a unique positive strictly increasing function such that this equality holds for S included in such interval where Sk is equal to Ak minus 2 b pi over 2. Now I will introduce our main idea of the proof. Firstly, we will use the Gerhardt's flow to derive the relation between A2 and A0. Then we will use the Chen Guanli Schur's flow to derive the relation between A1 and A minus 1. Finally, under the assumption of this inequality taking hold in the case of k minus 2, we could obtain that this equality holds in the case of k by induction method. Next, let me move on to the Gerhardt's flow and its application. Consider a symmetric, monotonous, and homogeneous of degree 1 coverage function f. Gerhardt considered two types flow. These two types flow are a pair of dual flow. The first type of flow is coverage flow, which is a contracting flow. The second type of flow is inverse coverage flow, which is a expanding flow. The contracting flow hypersurfaces shrink to a point x0 when the expanding hypersurfaces converge to the equator of the hemisphere. We will use the contracting flow, uh, we will use the expanding flows to establish the relation between AK and AK minus 2. For 0 less than t1, less than t2, less than t star, we will have omega t1 are included in omega t2, are included in omega t star. As t tend to t star, omega t tend to the geodesic ball pi uh, b 
with radius of pi over two. With this, with this estimate, we could obtain that the volume of omega t tends to volume of b pi over two, and the integral of one over m t tends to the area of b pi over two, and the integral of sigma k of m t tends to zero. Thus, we can obtain that a k tend to a k b pi over two as t tend to t star. Moreover, by the definition of k c k, k c k is a positive def positive defined function such that this inequality holds in geodesic ball. So this part will tend to zero as t tend to t star. By the convergence property of this flow, we could have that q k t tend to zero as t tend to t star. The key step is to find monoton geometric quantities. If we could prove that QK is long increasing along the flow, then we can obtain that the initial value of QK zero are greater than or equal to zero. This inequality is the inequality what we want to prove. Next, we will sketch the proof of monotonicity of the geometry quantities. This proposition implies the specific information of the derivative of k c k k minus two, which is crucial to our proof. Assume m the initial hypersurface m zero is a geodesic sphere. Along the flow x t nu over f, m t is still a geodesic. That that is to say, the geodesic stay as a geodesic sphere. Along this inverse curvature flow. Then, by the definition of k c k k minus two, we'll have the following equality. Take the derivative on both sides. We could obtain that. The first step we have used the variation property of core mass integral. And the second step, we have used the newton maclaurin inequalities. By the definition of a k, we have the two. We have these two equation. And by the definition of k c k minus two. And this equal to
and then we substitute substitute this into the above equation. Then the both sides are function of a k minus two b rho t. So we can obtain the proposition. Similarly, by the variation property of core mass integral and Newton Maclaurin inequality, we could compete as follows. By the by uh, the variation of a k minus two with respect to t is equal to k minus one f sigma k minus one along the flow. And we know that a k minus two t are included in this interval, where s k minus two equal to a k minus two b pi over two. Then we can use this to prove that the lomirate and the lomilate are both positive, which is crucial in our proof. Then we can obtain that the, deri the derivative of a k minus k k k minus two a k minus two are uh, no greater than this term. If we assume q k equal to this, q k is long increasing along the flow. Finally, we will establish the relation between a1 and a minus 1. Generally, more generally, we could establish the relation between a m and a minus 1 for general m. We will use Chen Guan Li Schwartz flow to establish this inequality. Since the convergence of the flow and the long, long, uh, and the long time existence can obtain by the result of previous uh, by the previous results of Guan and Li, we could obtain that the surfaces converge exponentially to a sphere as t tends to infinity in the c infinity topology. The C2 estimate is still open question for general k. We just consider the case of k equal to zero here. Then by the variation property of core mass integral and the Newton Maclaurin inequality, we could obtain the monotonicity of geometric quantity.
I will stop here. Thanks for your attention.